Okay, question six, the unnatural amino acids question. This is a useful trick. I asked as a mechanism question because you need practice. And this is a very, very long but repetitive mechanism to draw out. So drawing it out is going to take some time, but it's not difficult. So first, enolate formation. So we have our amine base, deprotonating that, forming an enolate. So, that puts me here. I have a negative charge there. I have my nitrogen here. So I'm just going to draw a circle to indicate the rest of that. We don't need it for right this second. The enolate then attacks here. The alkyl halide displaces that. That's an SN2 reaction. So, that gets me here. At that point, what's left is ester hydrolysis and amid hydrolysis. Lengthy protonation followed by water as a nucleophilic attack, and then deprotonation over and over and over. So it's lengthy, it's not difficult. So here we go. For the esters, I'm just going to draw one side of it, and we'll basically just draw the other side of it as having gone through the same thing without the arrows. So it'll make this a little easier to draw. I have R, and I'm just going to put the nitrogen as R2 right now. We will get back to that in a moment. Um, realistically, the ester and the amide are all hydrolyzing at once. We're going to treat them sequentially just to make this reasonable to draw. So, first, we have the hydronium ion. Protonation happens at the carbonyl group, or carbonyl groups as it may be in this case. So I'm going to draw them both as protonated, even though we're only drawing the arrows for one, just to make this reasonable to draw. That makes the carbonyl interesting to water. So now we have the ability to do a weak nucleophile attack on that carbonyl. And again, the same thing's happening with the other ester. I'm only drawing arrows on one just to make this a little less cumbersome looking. So I'm going to have now this and this. Let me stretch this out a little bit so I can see everything clearly. More so you can, actually. So now I have both sides of the, uh, both of the esters now. Carbonyl's gone. I have three individual single oxygens. And then I'm going to have another molecule of water take care of that. To give me another neutral compound. So now I've got this. why it is that I have such a problem with the pen at the bottom of the screen, but all right so at this point I've got the precursors in place to get rid of the esters, but I don't have a driving force to get rid of them yet nobody's a good leaving group here, which means nobody's interested in leaving but we're still in acidic solution. So, again, all these steps are equilibria, but that only matters if one of them turns out to be a productive direction. Then the equilibria will shift. So, protonation of those alkoxide oxygens, the, the ester oxygen, is going to get me here. So now I'm going to be looking at this. I still have my two OHs on each of those. I still have my, my new R group, my nitrogen, and I still have my two OHs on the other ester. And that oxygen is positive. 
Well, now I have a reason to get rid of it. So, I'm going to use the top one just for simplicity. Now, I've got the methoxide or the, the alcohol gone, and I have carboxylic acids. So, I now have this. Now that in itself doesn't go anywhere, but we have a rotation around this bond. So we do that, and what we get is something that is productive. We've rotated one carboxylic acid 90 degrees, or 180 degrees. So that now we can deprotonate it using the lone pair of the carboxylic acid. When I do that, I actually get carbon dioxide as a byproduct, and I get the formation of an enolate, an, an acid enolate, temporarily. So that left carbon ends up as carbon dioxide. I'm going to draw it in place. I still have the R and NR to here, but I have a double bond where that was, like this. Now this is obviously the wrong geometry for that alkene, but I'm trying to show you where things ended up in the previous structure. Oh, sorry, and that H is there. It's not an anion. So that H is still there. So this is what was this hydrogen, this one. And this double bond is still where it was. And this is the one that actually forms with this arrow from the hydrogen to oxygen bond. So... Now I have something that is going to undergo tautomerization fairly quickly using the solvent. So, let's just draw that real quick. I'm going to fix the geometry. I have that, and I have acid present, so I can use the enolate, the enol, sorry, to protonate that carbon, and I get my hydrogen on the terminal end. Now I have this. Which water will take care of. So now I have my carboxylic acid. Now, we've ignored the nitrogen up to this point. Realistically, nitrogen amide hydrolysis is slower anyway, so drawing it last is not a big problem. But we're going to have to actually look at it now so that we can see what's going on. So we're going to redraw it properly now. So, we have this. We have the R group. I'm going to stop drawing the enolate hydrogen there because we don't need it. The, uh, so the alpha hydrogen, we don't need it for what we're doing now. And so now we're going to go through almost exactly the same process here. And it's going to start with... Um, it's going to start with protonation of these. So very much like we did before. And making those... And again, it's unlikely they're both happening at once, but I'm just going to draw it symmetrically so that we can actually just get on with it and not draw something that's even longer than it is already. So now we've got a carbonyl that's willing to be attacked. So we have water present, and in we go. In both cases, I'm only drawing the arrows on one side as before, just to make this a little more visible. So we're here... So we now have this protonated version. Same thing over here. And then water is going to help us take care of that. So that we get to a neutral compound here. So we're going to be looking at very, very similar to what we saw in the previous case.
with two oxygen there. So now we've got to make that nitrogen into a leaving group, which is not easy. This is why we typically don't use hydrolysis as a way of removing an amide like this, because it requires harsher conditions. So we're now looking at something that's going to require us to protonate that nitrogen. Um, that's not particularly difficult, but it's not a great leaving group. Usually it requires much stronger acid to get this done than we would have to have to hydrolyze, hydrolyze an ester. It also tend to, tends to require higher temperatures. So, again, I'm just going to draw one of these, but two of them are actually happening. They're not going to happen simultaneously at this point, absolutely, but we'll just pretend they do. You're not going to protonate the same nitrogen twice. You don't have two lone pairs. So these you would have to do separately. But just... When we get to the end of this step, I'm just going to say, do it again, because it'll be obvious what I mean by that. So we've symmetrically drawn this so far just to make it less arrows, but at this point we can't. We can't go beyond four bonds to nitrogen, so there's no way we can double protonate it at one time. That's impossible. It is positively charged now. So... So, we now can lose it as a leaving group. So after that stage, and um, probably could use water too there to help kick that off by taking that proton at the same time. So at that stage, we're here. So we now have one side of that thing ripped off. And so we then have the other side still in place. So we've got to do that same trick again with the rest of this mess. So I'm going to just cut it off there since the screen's going to cut me off there. Um, the piece that was there sticking around the other side of that will be a carboxylic acid. That's this portion of what we're working with is now a carboxylic acid. We're going to do the same thing again. The step we just did, protonation of the nitrogen, followed by forming a carboxylic acid. That's going to get us here. So we're going to just do, you know, do it again. So that we get to this. So we're here. And the leftover product is that benzene ring. It was the bottom end of that thing. And now it just has two carboxylic acids on it. That was what was looped around to the nitrogen. But we're still in acidic solution. That amine is basic. So the last step here to get to what I've drawn as the final product initially is protonation one more time on the nitrogen. So that puts us here. And we now have the NH3 group because we're in acidic solution. We have the carboxylic acid after we lost the other side of the ester. And we have the R group that came from the first steps that I drew on this page. So it's a really long and tedious mechanism. But basically all it is for everything in step three is protonate, attack with water, deprotonate. Protonate, leaving group, deprotonate. Protonate, attack with water, deprotonate. Over and over and over. Nothing difficult there, just tedious and repetitive. That is very common that we have something like that happen mechanistically. So, I want you to see it. I want you to draw it. Clearly, not many people did, because you're probably looking at this like, wow, I didn't draw a tenth of that. I, I know. Neither did anyone else. So, we kind of missed the point of this. But it was meant to be practiced with acid and amid mechanisms on top of what we already had done with here with the enolate. So, it's still good practice. It's just lengthy and tedious.